we had last year, which was frost. We don't frost protect this vineyard. Um, and until last year, we really hadn't had any uh, reason to. We don't have the infrastructure here to do that. So what we've done is we've pre-pruned this vineyard and left several buds on these, on these canes that we're now going to start pruning off. And by doing this, we've done two things. One, we've gotten the bulk of the growth, last year's growth, the brush, out of the canopy, out of the wires, which is basically the most time-intensive component of pruning, is getting all that stuff out. So we've gotten all that out, which, and, but we've also, the second thing we've done is we've left a number of growth nets here in order to absorb the energy of the vine as it wakes up in the spring and delay the, the emergence of the buds down here, which are the ones that we're going to keep. So um, I'd still, we're, we're, the guys are here pruning just to basically help demonstrate, but we're going to wait another week or two before we actually come and do the final pruning here. But the idea is that the vines will first push out up here in the higher buds. And by leaving them here, that can happen. If we cut this off now, then the energy will go into the base of the buds, which are the ones we ultimately want to keep. So the idea is that we will delay the emergence of these buds by leaving these a while longer. I'm sorry. Um, so you did that last fall? No, we did thing. this about a month ago. About a month ago. So yeah. you left the whole everything on until about a month ago. Yeah, we okay. wanted the vines good and dormant before we made any cuts at all. Okay. And then we went through and cut the brush out, pre-pruned it here. In order to get the brush out, get it mowed, allow the sheep to work, and then also leave these higher growth points to absorb the initial push of the vine in the spring. So once these start to push out, we're going to come in and cut these off at two buds. We, normally, we leave on, on good healthy canes, we'll leave two buds per spur. We actually prune to a spur once we cut this off. Here. Now we call this a spur. So the spur has two buds. Each of those buds will produce a shoot that will grow ideally about three feet tall. Final pruning. Yes. They're not doing the final pruning yet. They are, but basically, we're not going to do the whole vineyard okay. now. We're going to wait a couple more okay. weeks. They're doing it basically to show you all. So it's just a two step process that you're doing. Right yes. Now. And that's because of the frost. Yes. Okay. We're trying if to get frost protection here, you wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Probably not as concerned. No. Although, we, had, we have other vineyards that we frost protected on. So you're cutting this right down to the very bottom? Yes. We use the bottom. Two of those and those, they grow up way big. Yeah. That's the one Which ones grow up big? These? These ones. They come in up in about one week. You see it. Oh, great. Maybe six days. That soon? Yep. Wow. One week, five days. to have room for the clusters to, to grow. We want to be able to have air movement in here during the season, which is um, very important in, pre in preventing excess humidity and um, just stagnant air, which causes mildew and other problems, rock type problems. Um, so we, we space these out. You know, sort of the rule of thumb is if you can put your hand in between each of these locations, 
that's about right. So it's about six inches is what we're doing. And we also want wow. the clusters to widen at the same time. We don't want it to widen at five different times. Mm -hmm. so we have oh, just to close. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and by having enough space, the sun can get to them and take care of that. No, not necessarily. I mean, this is all Sauvignon Blanc here, and actually some vineyards do an entirely different type of pruning system on Sauvignon Blanc. Hmm. Um, this is called a spur prune system, because we're leaving spurs. Um, frequently, Sauvignon Blanc is, is cane pruned. And with cane pruning, you don't have a cordon arm on each side of the vine. You have instead a, several spur positions around this crown. And those spur positions will grow shoots, just like these do, but from a one location here. And so what's, what's done is that they will perhaps leave two spurs, but take the canes from from last year's growth and lay them down on the wire just for that year. So you, you end up with a couple of spurs here that will grow shoots for next year, and they'll have fruit on those as well. But you put a fresh cane down every year on the wire, and that cane will just be, it'll be like, uh, Shorty, but it will be just like this where it'll have buds all along. Each of those buds will push one shoot during the year. And the idea behind this, Sauvignon Blanc tends to be a vigorous variety. And um, frequently people have had problems with, because of that vigor, there's so much shading down in this area that some of these buds actually become infertile. And so after a number of years, say eight to ten years, um, they just lose their productivity. So by putting a fresh cane down every year, you get new buds going down um, and more even production. That's not the case here. Um, one, because this is not as vigorous a site as, as we see in other areas, like in the valley where Sauvignon Blanc is planted heavily. Um, so this isn't as vigorous, so there's not as much shade. Also, the style of um, uh, trellis that we have here allows for light to get in here. We, we don't generally pull leaves here. That's commonly done in other areas. But because we're, we have good exposure here, we don't really need to. And we are also trying to prevent from burning the fruit by overexposing it to the sun. So, um, but some places where there's lots of vigor, they have to do lots of leaf removal. And uh, so, anyway, to answer your question, there are, there are a number of different ways of pruning, but this is a spur prune system. This is probably the most common. Um, in the in the business. What's the orientation here? Is this north south? No, this is about 45 degrees. This is sort of northeast southwest. So north is uh, north is south. Yeah. That, that way. Yeah. And there's plants at 45 degrees to the right because that way the afternoon sun hits when it's hottest at about 2 o'clock, almost straight down the row. So if the sun comes from up here, it hits down the row and it doesn't hit the fruit. Whereas if you do it straight north-south, at 2 o'clock the sun's over here compared to the row, and it really cooks the clusters right in from that, from that time. There's all sorts of debates in the industry about what's the best row direction. When you get into hilly terrain, you know, this isn't, this isn't bad, but where you have steep terrain, you're pretty much committed to farming up and down the, against the contours, mm -hmm. just so you can drive straight up. Because if, if you drive on an incline, you know, yeah. then it's 